Beating cancer requires a new level of connecting sites, sponsors, and monitors. Thank you for joining me today in this session on how TechRow is improving collaboration across all stakeholders involved in conducting and managing oncology clinical trials. My name is Casey Drobeck, and I'm our Director of Clinical Operations here at TechRow. I've been in the research industry for nearly 15 years and have held many different roles from sites, CROs, and sponsors. TechRow is a global technology company that provides solutions to simplify and modernize clinical research for pharma as well as biotech. We're used in over 100 trials and over 12,000 sites around the world. With the current situation with COVID-19, we thought it would be good to have our backgrounds as different cities to emphasize that we're a global company working with many different sponsors and sites across many different countries. Today, I'll be taking you through some of the challenges faced by cancer trials, as well as an overview of our platform and the benefits that we can provide to help speed recruitment, reduce noncompliance, and improve patient safety. I'd quickly like to go through some of the introductions of our expert speakers today. First, we have Oscar, who's a senior clinical trial coordinator at MD Anderson in Houston, Texas. He has a PhD in biomedical sciences, and at MD Anderson, he provides regulatory support as well as works on protocol development for the oncology trials there. Next, we have Andrea Parrish, who is our Executive Director of Risk Management and Process Quality at TechRo. She's based in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. And she has nearly over 20 years experience in the clinical research industry, ranging from global quality assurance, strategic alliance management, and business process optimization. And finally, we'll be speaking with Rita Boland, who is one of the customer success managers here at TechRo. And she has over 10 years experience um, in customer uh, relationship management. Let's move on into our discussion with Oscar in our first city, Houston. And he will be walking through some of the common and unique challenges that clinical research site staff face when conducting cancer trials. Thank you, Casey. Hi, everyone. My name is Oscar. I'm a senior clinical study coordinator at MD Anderson Cancer Center. I'd like to discuss today with you the challenges that we face when carrying out our clinical trials. But first, a quick overview of MD Anderson Center for those not familiar with us. MD Anderson is one of the leading cancer treatment and research centers in the world. Our patients come from all over the globe. In 2019, almost 150,000 people were treated by us in an inpatient setting. Among these patients, 45,000 were new patients. In the same year, we enrolled more than 10,000 patients in around 1,400 clinical trials exploring innovative treatments. That is amazing, Oscar. As a leader in the cancer field, I'm sure that you're always striving for improvement and innovation um, to advance uh, cancer research. So. With this, I can imagine there's probably quite a few challenges. Would it be possible for you to walk us through those today? Absolutely. Uh, you know, as you know, clinical trials really need time and collaboration of multiple teams. You know, because of time restraints, today I will focus on three distinct groups, the clinical, the data, and regulatory staff. Starting with our clinical staff, this includes investigators and the study coordinators. Uh, their challenges include protocol compliance, and knowing what version of the current approved study documents we are on for each trial. Also, recruiting patients in a timely manner can be a problem. Clinical staff are always short on time, so they have limited time to make decisions. And of course, for longer studies, patient retention is a concern. Let's take an example here. For a study, a patient was enrolled despite not meeting one of the exclusion criteria. There was a recent protocol amendment that had updated the specific exclusion criterion, but this update was unintentionally missed during the screening. This resulted in a major deviation, and it had to be reported to the sponsor, to the local IRB, and there were additional corrective actions taken, such as retraining the study staff. This problem could have been uh, avoided if they, uh, if they had a more efficient way of knowing the current approved protocol, and if they had a way to quickly access protocol content to answer specific questions about eligibility and enrollment while seeing a potential patient. 
Thank you, Oscar, for flagging those challenges for us today with the clinical staff. Um, would you now mind going into a few of the pain points that other roles within MD Anderson experience on their cancer trials? Sure. Uh, I would now like to talk about the challenges faced by the data staff. This includes inefficient communication workflows, also lack of confidence in responses from some CRAs, and the high volume of case report forms to complete, plus delays in data entry. I remember one specific time when inefficient communication caused a study delay. For the study, the case report forms in the EDC had been completed by the data coordinator. It was reviewed and queried by the CRA, then sent back to the data coordinator to respond and update the data on the forms. However, the data coordinator needed additional clarification from the CRA in order to update the data and resolve the query in a timely manner. Unfortunately, the CRA was unresponsive to the data coordinator and this resulted in unresolved queries and the data was not cleaned by the data cutoff study milestone. And there was general frustration by the data coordinator. This issue could have been avoided if there was a more efficient and direct communication channel between the data coordinator and the CRA. I can imagine those struggles for the data team. Uh, would it be possible for you to walk through some of the, the challenges for the regulatory staff as well? Uh, I have had many discussions with the regulatory staff on clinical trials. Some of the common challenges include oversight of a high number of complex trial and managing a high number of IRB submissions, such as protocol amendments, violations, and annual reviews. Uh, and incomplete transition and communication documentation for prior study staff is another major challenge. I'm thinking about a specific example where there was an issue with a protocol amendment approval. For this study, there was a delay in IRB approval for a protocol amendment that was required for continuation of a current patient and also enrollment of new patients. This delay resulted in rescheduling of the current patient and caused a deviation in the protocol. In addition, the enrollment of new patients were on hold until the approval of the new, amend new amendment. The protocol amendment was not submitted to IRB in a timely manner for a variety of reasons, such as heavy workload of the regulatory staff, lack of resources, and inefficient process of communicating study updates to sites. This issue could have been avoided if the regulatory team member was made aware of the amended protocol and uh, the study update sooner, and they needed more time in their day to focus on this trial and prioritize the amendment submission to IRB. Thank you, Oscar. We'll come back to your points after we hear from the sponsor and monitor points of view. Now let's move on to our second city, Tokyo, Japan, with Andrea. Hello, thank you, Casey. Um, my name is Andrea Parrish, and I am Executive Director, Risk Management and Process Quality at Tecro, and I'm happy to join you all today. Having just heard about the challenges experienced from a site's perspective, we can now focus on some of the challenges from a monitoring perspective. But first, it's important to provide an overview of the current regulatory environment in which monitors must work and how applying this regulation will help monitors better manage some of the challenges they face on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's talk about the current regulatory environment. What exactly has changed? ICH E6R2 is the first update to GCP in 20 years, and risk-based quality management is now a formal requirement due to the scale and complexity of clinical trials. So why was this regulation updated? This regulation was updated in response to repeated GCP inspection findings and encourages the industry to look at clinical trials using a clinical risk management approach regarding trial design, conduct, oversight, recording, and reporting. But also regulators are encouraging leveraging new and existing technologies and taking a holistic approach when managing clinical trials while implementing a risk-based monitoring strategy. So we've discussed the regulation, why the change was necessary, the impact this now has on the conduct of clinical trials, and finally, how a risk-based monitoring strategy is now a requirement. So now let's discuss what risk-based quality management is and what is the impact on clinical monitoring. Risk-based monitoring is defined as an adaptive approach to traditional clinical trial monitoring that directs monitoring focus and activities to the evolving areas of greatest need which have the most potential to impact subject safety and data quality. It incorporates quality risk management as a foundation for ensuring patient safety and data quality. So how exactly does this approach improve data quality and patient safety? Well, first of all, it requires a reduction in the effort on low value activities. 
So in other words, does 100% source documentation verification make sense? And does that equal better quality? And the answer is no. Um, it does also require that monitors should focus their efforts on significant endpoint data supporting safety and efficacy. Specific to these key objectives, the focus of monitoring um, should be on four key processes related to these critical data points and critical processes. And these are, if a required process was followed, if a required process was completed in the time frame specified, how the process was completed, was it completed in, in, in accordance with the protocol, and was the process conducted properly and in accordance with the protocol and or study objectives. So by thoroughly and successfully implementing a risk-based quality monitoring approach, you will have better quality, reliability, interpretation of data, all leading to a more efficient approval process. We've talked about the regulation, the reasons for the change in regulation, the requirements for monitors, and why this is important. But applying these concepts have been challenging due to a variety of reasons. Some of these challenges include proactively identifying and monitoring risks. And why is this an issue? Risks can change frequently, and these changes aren't realized in time. Also, thresholds for risks aren't known or little is known. Also, monitors are at times monitoring multiple trials simultaneously. CRAs may lack access to most, the most up-to-date information, and sometimes the timely communication with study stakeholders can be an issue. But there are other challenges that are uniquely related to monitoring oncology trials, and some of these include protocol complexity with many procedures and or assessments, complex trial landscape making it difficult to recruit patients leading to low enrollment rates, strain and balancing randomization across treatment arms, and toxicity management is often very complex. In summary, these challenges are very similar to the challenges that sites face, as well as which Oscar just spoke about. But despite these challenges and by utilizing existing technologies and more streamlined communication pathways, monitors can and will overcome these challenges. So thank you very much, Casey. Back to you. Thank you, Andrea. We'll come back to your points after we hear from the sponsor's point of view. Now let's go to our third city, which is Dublin, Ireland, with Rita. Hi everyone, my name is Rita Boland and I'm delighted to be able to join you today. As you might recognize my background, I'm based in Ireland, if my accent hasn't already given it away. My position as a customer success manager allows me to work with study teams across a number of customer portfolios at TechGrow. This gives me a real knowledge of the sponsor challenges both at an individual study level and at a sponsor level. As I assume most of you already know, there are several challenges that are common to nearly all trials. As Casey mentioned, I'm here today to discuss some of the challenges which our sponsors face while conducting and managing clinical trials, particularly those in oncology trials. To begin, I'll give you a background into what some of the sites are currently using on TechGrow to assist them in the fight against cancer. Over 50% of the trials that are live on TechGrow today are oncology trials. And currently, we have over 7,100 cancer research sites using TechGrow to find the answers to clinical trial questions. One of the most fascinating things that we're able to see with the search data is that we have identified a co direct correlation between sites using TechGrow and having fewer protocol deviations, and also sites are enrolling patients faster. Casey will discuss this in further detail a little bit later. The most common challenges which our sponsors are facing on a daily basis and which I want to talk and discuss with you today are site engagement and patient retention, study design complexities, particularly those related to the visit schedules and assessments, toxicity and safety management, and finally, visibility of what sites are doing or lack thereof. If we take the first point on patient retention site engagement, we know this is an area of concern across most trials, particularly those with long study duration, notwithstanding now in the current climate with COVID-19. We are constantly working with study teams to assist in any way that we can in the fight to keep patients engaged in trials, particularly those, for example, five or six plus years. 
Linked, maybe not directly to patient retention, is site engagement. I have received study team feedback and have seen firsthand the difficulty in keeping sites engaged, particularly when they are running multiple simultaneous trials. This leads to a difficulty keeping sites engaged with study documents, and we all know the issues which lead from this. Study design complexity, particularly visit schedules, is a second area I want to discuss. Oncology trials typically have many visits and assessments during the trial and have a very detailed assessment and procedure list for each visit. We can also see the complexities with a larger number of protocol amendments in oncology trials and through the changes to the visit procedures, inclusion criteria, to make the studies more desirable for both sites and patient. The third sponsor challenge, which is one of the most severe, particularly on patients, is it related to toxicity and safety management. Study teams are currently being reactive as opposed to proactive, and they only find out about issues after they have happened. This gives the study team extremely limited ability to preempt AEs and SAEs, and also leads into my final point, which is evident in every clinical trial, not just oncology. This is the lack of visibility as to what sites are doing in real time. There is a disconnect between the study teams with monitors and sites, and this has become an even larger issue, particularly in the current climate, with site statuses changing on a daily and weekly basis. There are multiple studies in TechRow that display all or some of the challenges, and I'll give you an example of just one. This study has a large number of sites with around 4,500 patients enrolled. It is a 10-year trial, and as with most studies, has a high CRA turnover and a large site staff turnover as well. I'm sure you can all relate to this with study turnovers. In this trial, patient visits become less regular as the trial progresses and are on average now every six months or so. This is a huge issue and a real concern for trying to keep patients engaged particularly patients whose health outcomes are not improving. Yet they have another seven or so years to be returning to sites for visits. So how does the site and the study team get these patients to remain on the trial? This study also has the added complexity of a large number of protocol amendments. In the last two and a half years, there have been six protocol amendments. With the complexity of multiple protocols and complicated visit schedules, Sites are resorting to creating their own cheat sheets. How do we know the site is using the correct cheat sheet as per the latest protocol they've approval for? How do we know the site is referring to the correct documents and protocol when the patient is at site? The answer is we don't until the data review takes place. These are real challenges that sponsors are facing and are only a sample of the discussions that me and my colleagues have had on daily and weekly basis with study teams. I want to thank you all for taking the time and now I'm going to pass you over to Casey. Thank you, Rita, for highlighting some of the trial challenges for sponsors. Now, we are in our fourth city, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I'd like to give a quick overview of the TechRow platform, as well as discuss how we can help with some of the previously discussed pain points, as well as connect all stakeholders to ensure the success of a clinical trial. Tecro is a simple, intuitive clinical trial software to run your trials more smoothly. We have three main products, which I have listed on the screen, and I'd like to walk through a few of our key features today. Tecro makes study documents instantly searchable so that users can find key information in seconds, as well as have quick access to recent study updates that can impact how a trial is conducted. As we heard from Oscar earlier today, if the investigator or study coordinator in his case study had eligibility information from a recent protocol amendment instantly searchable on their phone, then that patient may not have been enrolled under the wrong version of the protocol, thus preventing the protocol violation from ever happening. We all know that investigators have a limited amount of time with patients on a daily basis. Let's just say five minutes. This is a very small amount of time to make key decisions. With Tecro, an investigator does not have to go to his office, flip through a paper protocol, 
or contact an on-site study coordinator or monitor to get the answers that he or she needs in a timely manner. He just simply has to pull out his phone, type in a query in the TechRo search bar, and receive the most relevant answers in seconds. That's it. Simple enough, right? I'd like to walk through another example of the visit schedule. You can see how the schedule of activities in the protocol is broken down into each visit, giving users easy, instant information to what's required in each visit, which is very useful with oncology trials because they have such complex study designs and lengthy schedule of activity tables, which can span across many, many pages in the protocol. It's also critical to have study visit and assessment windows flagged to those working on the clinical trial as out of visit windows and assessments is a very common deviation, not just in oncology trials, but across all therapeutic areas. If we recall Rita's toxicity management example, you can see in this view how TechRo is guiding users to the next steps when it comes to managing toxicities or adverse events. With TechRo, study teams get insight into what sites are searching. We have an interactive global map of search activity, as well as a dashboard of search terms that gives study managers good insight into potential issues with the study design, other trial documents, and early indications of safety issues. It also provides actionable insight into study performance so that trends can be detected sooner and proactively addressed. Now I'd like to talk to you about our communication capabilities. We're able to provide a secure, real-time digital connection to every stakeholder so that critical information and communication can be targeted to the right people at the right time via push notifications, in-app messages, as well as surveys. Here you can see the dashboard view and what messages have been sent, to whom, as well as who has opened and read the message. You also have the ability to export these messages to include in your trial master file for audit inspection readiness. I'd quickly like to walk through some of the impact that we can have on clinical trial operations, as these are very significant. You can see here that sites searching on TechRo are more engaged with the protocol. And during the process of recruitment, we can see that sites that are more active in TechRo are able to enroll faster compared to sites that do not have TechRo. Here you can see a number of therapeutic areas, but let's specifically look at the oncology trials. One has enrolled 49% more patients compared to sites not using TECRO, and then we have another cancer trial that enrolled over 105% more patients than those not using TECRO. Here you can see that we also have an impact on the reduction in deviations for a trial. Because oncology protocols are so complex, Having instant access to study information can have a huge impact on the number of errors for a trial. We've seen anywhere from 15% reduction in deviations up to 55% reduction in deviations for sites actively searching in TechRo compared to sites that do not have TechRo. We also have surveyed several trials in TechRo and received feedback from sites on how they enjoyed the platform. So you can see on this view that there's 86% uh, of site users that would recommend TechRo. Um, and this is, this is very significant, and you don't really see this with other software applications. So I would also like to note that none of our sponsors have mandated the use of TechRo for their sites, but that the sites love it so much that they're, you know, this 86% is a very high rate. Also, we continuously receive feedback from site staff asking to put TechRo on additional clinical trials. So to sum things up, we're talking about bringing together three groups of stakeholders on clinical trials to help accelerate cancer research. As we heard from Oscar, TechRo is able to help sites with faster enrollment as well as reducing deviations. In terms of sponsors, we can really help with the challenges that Rita discussed in, regard, in regards to trial operations as well as oversight. And TechRo can allow monitors to be more efficient in providing answers quicker, as well as streamlining communication with sites. Thank you again for your time today. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And if you'd like additional information about TechRo, you can visit our website or connect with us on social media. Thank you.